What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. Today, we dive into the audio recording series. Before attempting to record sound, I think it's a good idea to understand what sound is, how it functions, and the various properties surrounding it. As percussionists, we work with a vast palette of sounds. From the super high overtones of a triangle, down to the deepest concert bass drum, the range of amplitudes, frequencies, tone colors, and durations of notes we work with is seemingly infinite. Today we're going to talk about the properties of sound before they ever enter the microphone. So what is sound? In a nutshell, when an object vibrates, it sends pressure waves throughout the air in the form of sound. We've all seen audio waves like this one, but how does it get its shape? Let's use a snare drum as an example. When I strike the drum, air rushes out of it, creating a high pressure wave. However, when that air leaves, it creates an empty void of space, which air quickly rushes back into, creating a low pressure wave, thus the shape of sound. This sets off a chain reaction of similarly shaped waves throughout the air, which interact with surrounding materials and surfaces, eventually making contact with our eardrums. Our eardrums allow us to decipher multiple properties of sound simultaneously. Because our perception of sound is not a scientific measurement, sound is described using two different methods of terminology. Acoustics is the science of sound, in which measurements are obtained with actual acoustic measuring devices. Psychoacoustics refers to our perception of sound. Amplitude, sometimes referred to as dynamics, refers to the maximum height of a sound wave, determining how loud it is. The larger the amplitude, the higher the wave, and the louder the sound. The lower the amplitude, the lower the wave, and the softer the sound. Similar to musical terminology, dynamic range is the difference between the loudest and quietest parts of a sound wave. We'll talk more about dynamic range when we get to microphones. Amplitude is measured in decibels, named after Alexander Graham Bell. The decibel is a very versatile measurement and is treated somewhat differently in the variety of fields it's applied in. Loudness is the psychoacoustical term we use to describe how loud or soft a sound is perceived. We measure loudness using a measurement called sound pressure level, or SPL, which measures the resulting air pressure of a sound. This physical force is interpreted as loud, soft, or somewhere in between when it hits our eardrums. This scale is based on what humans can hear, with complete silence having a value of zero decibels. Sounds going above 130 decibels SPL can become painful and even harmful to our ears. As a result, regulations have been put in place which limit exposure to high sound pressure levels in the workplace. To review, amplitude is a scientific measurement of how loud a sound is. Loudness is how loud or soft a sound is perceived to be by human beings. Both are measured in decibels, which again are measured differently depending on the application, but we'll be demystifying the decibel throughout the series. To set us up for frequency, a wavelength, or wave cycle, is the distance from the start to the end of a single sound wave. Frequency refers to the amount of wave cycles per second. A lower frequency will have less cycles per second and more space between the wave cycles. A higher frequency will have more cycles per second and less space between wave cycles. Frequency is measured in hertz, or cycles per second. 1 kilohertz is equal to a thousand hertz. Humans can hear frequencies between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, or 20,000 hertz. Frequency range is the distance between the highest and lowest frequencies within a given recording. Different instruments have varying frequency ranges depending on how they're tuned. For example, a snare drum typically ranges from 120 hertz to 250 hertz. A 5 octave marimba has a range of 110 to 2093 hertz, or roughly 2 kilohertz. Other instruments, such as timpani, will vary depending on the model and size of the drums, but as long as you have a ballpark estimate, I think you're in good shape. For quick and easy reference, check the description below for a link to a table illustrating the frequency information of the most common string, wind, and percussion instruments. 
pitch is actually a psychoacoustic term we use to describe how low or high a sound is perceived. We use a mathematical system to quantify pitches. For example, 440 hertz is the pitch we know as A4. If we double that frequency number, we end up with A5. If we cut it in half, we get A3, A2, and A1. To review, frequency is a scientific measurement, whereas pitch is how low or high a sound is perceived. Both are measured using hertz, or wave cycles per second. Timbre, also referred to as tone color or texture, is what affects the shape of the wave. It's what allows us to distinguish clearly between different types of sounds. Timbre is affected by acoustic properties of the instrument or sound source and the acoustics of the surrounding environment. Unlike amplitude and frequency, timbre is much too difficult to quantify with any measurement other than words. A few examples of words used to describe timbre include warm, dark, rough, or hollow. One of the most important parts of timbre is what we call transients. Transients refer to the timbre of the attack or start of a sound. In percussion performance, this attack can be manipulated with a stick or mallet choice, bar placement, angle of attack, and several other methods. It's also dependent on the acoustical properties of the sound source, such as Paduke versus Rosewood marimba bars or brass versus bronze triangles. Duration refers to the lifespan of a sound, the amount of time elapsed between its creation and its eventual death. While it should go without saying, the measurement of duration is, yep, you guessed it, time. Duration is affected by the initial amplitude of a sound, the resonant properties of the sound source, as well as how the sound interacts with the space around it as it travels throughout the air. Speaking of sound travel, when sound is initially created, it travels omnidirectionally, meaning equally in all directions. Reverberation, or reverb, refers to the prolongation of sound as it reflects off of the various materials and surfaces around it. Depending on their makeup, materials can either reflect or absorb sound. Blankets, towels, carpet, and other softer materials will absorb sound, whereas materials such as granite, marble, glass, and concrete will reflect sound. These reflections are heard as a single continuous sound, as they're so quick that we can't hear them individually. Acoustic engineers can actually capture the acoustics of a given space and use that information to create digital plugins such as Altiverb, which allows you to apply reverb to your recordings based on a real life performance venue. Delay, or echo, echo. is a reflection of sound, but it's heard with a more distinct sound image. The big difference between reverb and echo is that reverb is blended and echo is distinct. Stinct. Sound can also be affected by temperature. You're all probably familiar with the myth that things expand when it's hot, which causes marimba resonators to expand and go out of tune. Well, if you know anything about physics, or if you've read Lee Stevens' article on the acoustics of marimba resonators, which I'll link to in the description, you know that sound simply travels faster in warmer temperatures and slower in colder temperatures. For this reason, many professional marimbas will adjust the length of the resonator tubes to compensate for any drastic differences in temperature prior to a performance. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something new today. And if you're enjoying this as much as I am, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can catch the next one where I talk about the basics of sound capture, from the moment that sound enters the microphone to that sweet, sugary goodness you hear coming from the speakers or headphones. Until then, happy recording.